This has been a long time coming. It's been in the works for quite a bit now. And uh, we're finally here to check out the behind the scenes of not even arguably the greatest fan made work for Dragon Ball in the history of history. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys your boy ooch and um for those that might be new i have been doing reactions for a while um and a lot of my content here on this channel sort of revolves around dragon ball like kinda and if you missed out on the biggest summer hit known as legend the dragon ball tale well i highly recommend you go and check out my reaction to it as well as obviously checking out the raw movie itself because it is very raw and it kind of changed the game and the landscape of what we know as like just even the main continuity of dragon ball in and of itself because it's such a perfect example to show people as to where the all of dragon ball could even go so it kind of took a lot of folks by storm and it you know has over 10 million views at at the time of this recording might have more at this point i haven't checked in a while i've gotten to get a lot closer to the creator nasir pasha dude is a genuine human being and i love him to death i'm very happy that he even went out of his way to make a documentary that i from what he was telling me if i remember this correctly originally was not even supposed to be this long i'm actually looking really forward to reacting reacting to this and I know this is going to be a little bit more on the longer side of things when it comes to reacting. I did tell him and a lot of other uh, folks in my discord that I was planning on reacting to this so I am finally getting to it now so let's check out behind the scenes of Legend of Dragon Ball Tale. <laughs> Wow. What? Oh! Yo. I remember this. Guys, that's the voice actor for Broly. Hmm. In case Super you didn't know. Super Saiyan Dragon Ball. I ain't spelled Saiyan's wrong. Wow, look at the sketches. Damn. Yo, is this a tease? I don't know. Let me stop. Three, six. Man, that was 22 years ago. <laughs> Youth. Youth. <laughs> I love it. The 9 million pound passion project that took over 9,000 hand drawn frames of animation to complete. Wow. It started in 2018 and chipped away at it my free time nightly. Four years of hard work in the hyperbolic time chamber led to my master thesis and Ugh. grand love letter. Shout out to the Bankai in the corner. Legend A Dragon Ball Tale. With over 9 million views, a million approvals. Oh, you can listen. Hold on. I don't. I don't I'm, I'm not trying to pause it a lot, but you could tell he was doing this before he hit the 10 mil. So obviously, a pitfall of comments, positivity, and a lot of hype. Oh yeah, a lot. Fan art. A lot of that too. Sheesh. CGI recreations of favorite scenes. Yup, from fighters. Cosplay. Amazing. Imaginary and real life action. Yo, figures. the fact that you know this is what I'm saying. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And even as far as seeing all the, the merch, heaven show up as a mod. I saw that the other day, universe. actually, recently. It's become overwhelmingly clear to me <laughs> that Legend of Dragon Ball Tale was exactly what the doctor ordered. Bro, the doctor. The, the assistant, the freaking front desk, the, all the people waiting in the lobby. Forget the fans. Everybody is literally was, was waiting for something like this, but you know. What goes into making a film from nothing and with no budget? If I can give you the short Passion. answer to that second part, it's that you have to ally yourself with people who really believe in you and with whom you can be reliable too. You have there it to is. make a promise and uncompromisingly keep it. That's how you get people to believe in your vision 
and shine their absolute best when teaming up with you. Mm. And so now we're going to dive into this yearbook. Can we just uh, shout out my man's godlike gorgeous hair? I just wanted to put that out there. We can continue. Of sorts. On the making of Legend and all the fantastic people who brought it to life with me. This is awesome. I feel like I'm watching I a movie. I've Dragon Ball Z ever since I was a kid. Uh, growing up and finally becoming an animator myself. Uh, you know, your tastes change over time. And Dragon Ball Z, as sweet as it was, just became um, a nice part of my memory. Mm. But you know, no matter how old I got, I always look back to Vegeta. He was the single most badass character in the show. That's, that's facts. And my friend Giuseppe reminded me of something. Something that my nostalgia prescription had blinded me to. Oh, here it comes. Yep. And that is Toriyama's Dark Secret. <laughs> I love it. We all know the story. Nah, he's still bad. Vegeta shows up to every big fight, talks a big game. How about a taste of my pride? Shots of Janemba. big blows. And then, just when he looks his coolest. Oh, my pride. Every time. He without made fail. an example of time after time. Mm -hmm. Watching this pattern for nearly two decades hurt me in my bones. We the prince felt. disrespected so hard, never getting the honor he deserved. But then, something happened. Mm. A new Dragon Ball came out. Super. One that would redeem our battered and betrayed prince. So we fucking thought. <laughs> Dragon Ball Super. There it is. <laughs> Surely our prince would become the best. <laughs> <laughs> Surely his royal Super Saiyan Blue Super Saiyan Blue would be enough to drop Jiren and the Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, take out Frieza. We, we don't want to talk about that one, right? Right? No. Not right. <laughs> Impossible. I... I leave it to you. Get go wrong. Mm -hmm. How could this be happening? It happened again. But something was different this time. <laughs> Something in me snapped. Enough's enough. That's it! I'm making my own Vegeta movie! Sleep did not come easily that night. As I stared at the ceiling unblinking, I wondered, <laughs> what must I do to attach respect to the man's name? How could I make him the king? Hmm. Oh. So what's the first step? What's the first step of taking this sheet of paper drawn for me? I have that now, guys, just in case you missed it. Go watch the video. It's in, it's in here. I'm not going to waste y'all time. Let's go. And turning it into something that everyone else can enjoy, too. So, step one. Don't tell anyone. Just shut your trash mouth and draw. Mm. In 2014, I had done a piece for Comic-Con titled Return of the King, where Vegeta, having defeated Broly once and for all, took his royal reds and fashioned it as his own. Is that Trunks? Oh. Attire, assuming the throne. Oh my Fast God. Fast forward four years and one night later, back in 2018, during a sketch jam after a night of training with Giuseppe Arabia, the idea returned, but in its true form. The new the king, new of, the king of the Saiyans. Mmm, let's go. And I proceeded to drawing him over and over again. And before I knew it, I had captured him in a way that I always felt but never saw. A royal badass. Oh, yeah. Honestly, guys, this is... And it still has yet to exist in the, in the actual continuity of Dragon Ball. Legend holds the greatest version of Vegeta to date, and that is a fact. From there, it was just daydreaming, imagining the perfect fight between Vegeta and Broly, where Goku could for once witness the magnificence of my favorite character, mm. which is what led to these beat boards. Moving on to create Goku, but a bit younger, Chi Chi, but a bit more jacked, <laughs> and Broly. The diabolical legend. Mm. I had my work cut out for me. My man gave everyone respect. And I was enjoying every second of it. 
Ooh. Vegeta, adding the red cape and green gems to liken it back to Broly's green gems and red shroud in movie 8 was key, and it brought it back to the original 2014 royal idea I had. You know, I didn't even peep that. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Yo, when you... Damn, see? And I thought I, 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 thought I cracked all the codes with, with Legend, but you know... Even though the movie itself is under 10 minutes long, there is so much to absorb. I, I, yo, shout outs. That OD. The freaking cape, it, yes, it is very, I didn't even, that, that totally, like, whew, right over my freaking head. That is reminiscent to Broly's Red John, too. Man, that's crazy. Goku was closer to the original Goku we knew and grew up with. I took some small liberties with his design, and even snuck in a little joke like replacing the kanji for turtle with a kanji for food. <laughs> As we all know that before martial arts in his family, Goku's first love is chicken. It's chicken, yep, I was just about to but say that. The Han in Grandpa Gohan is made up of the radical for food. Go figure. Mm -hmm. I did my absolute best to capture the beauty, grace, and ferocity of Chi Chi. Perfect job. To make it overwhelmingly clear that she would destroy anything that stood between her and her man. <laughs> yeah, he really, he really did. Like, even though she got her whole arm, like, broken right there, like, this is one of the most badass, like, this is the most badass Chi Chi, like, ever. Ever. And who could forget Broly? No the one. The man of the hour. And though only marginally different from the original, I wanted to play him up as a complete menace, mm. more in control of his actions and clever in his deceit. He was a time traveler in my film who believed, after losing to Goku and his family time after time, that he could eradicate them all if he went back to the moment where Goku married Chi Chi. Mm. His scars that he received at the end of movie 8 from Goku Shoryuken light up from the core of his soul as he remembers the vengeance that he's entitled to. I drew inspiration for this from Moroni Kenshin, but it turns out that his scars actually don't do that. I guess I just imagined that they light up so thematically. Mm. Good inspiration though. And lastly, how could we forget about Son Goku? This part got me savior screaming. From Though the most unique design of the lot, there's not much to be said about him. The design came really naturally to me. I wanted to take all that wrath, rage, and sheer beastly nature of a man sent from heaven as a savior to destroy anything in his way to protect the woman that he loves. Mm. The Monkey King has always played a big role in influencing my art. Mm -hmm. So it was only really a matter of time until I could bring him into this final form. Oh yeah, so that clip right there, for those that uh, have no idea where this came from, this is actually from, from one of Nasir's early video um, animation, like short animation projects. So I definitely check them out um, if you haven't. Like if you've only seen Legend, that's fine, but like really go and, and dig a little bit because you can see Nasir has been a talented individual for a very long time. And I actually did watch this. Like as soon as I finished watching Legend, I went in and I was like, yo, I need to see yo, what he, he he's cooking. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. Form. After I designed him, I shot him over to Mike Chung, who you'll meet in a moment, for some color iterations. I couldn't decide which I liked more, the red or the ash brown skin. So I ended up using both of them in the film by letting his burning red body start to cool off and become solid gray. Wow. We had Vegeta, Chi Chi, Goku, and the diabolical Broly. On to the next. Oh. Up until that point, it was mainly a solo endeavor, but I couldn't imagine doing it alone. Not because I couldn't, but because that would be so incredibly boring and lame. It's like going to a what? party alone. What's the first thing you do when you go to a party? You look for your friends. And friendship is so important to me. Mm, that's facts. Uh, me too. <laughs> Yo, Nas, what's good, man? I heard about the project, dog, the Dragon Ball project. It sounds amazing. I can't wait to be a part of it. Hit me up. Yeah. Yeah. Friendship. Loyalty. Honor. <laughs> These things are so important to me. <laughs> He's a clown. He's a clown for this. <laughs> 
Yo, Nas, uh, I'm driving, bro. I thought I got a missed call from you, or maybe a telemarketer. Uh, still really excited about the project. Uh, hit me up, man. You! Yeah. <laughs> Friendship. I can't imagine what I would do without my friends. You know, like Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hey Niles, what's up, brother? Uh, I ain't heard from you in a while, man. But I saw that Instagram mm. post with the Goku piece. Fire, man! I can't believe you did it without me, though. He said, "Go fuck yourself." That, but honestly, I was wrong. Anyway, we still gotta go with Brawl and stuff, so I can still be a part of it. Hit me up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friendship. Loyalty. <laughs> he can't. He can't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> Answer the damn phone this year. Come on. There we go. Hey, Nick, man. I haven't heard from you in a while. What are you saying, man? What's good? What's good? Uh -oh. What's good is I've been calling you, man. I've been calling you and calling you. Saw the Brawlers design. I guess you got them all done. All right, man. I see how it is. You know what, bro? Uh, I'm going to remember this. I'm gonna remember this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, watch your back when you out here in these Canadian streets. Canadian streets. Bottom. This. Disrespect. You know what, dog? Hit me up on the next one. That was hot. Get at it. Yeah. Nah, I'm just playing. We're good. <laughs> After design was locked up, it was time to get to the choreography of the film. The actual storyboarding of Legend. Storyboarding, if it isn't completely clear by its name, is literally making a board of your story. It's taking what's inside your head and bringing it out on paper. Well, it may not always be done on paper. So I can never do storyboards. I definitely still do my thumbs on paper. Beat for beat. Without giving too much thought or care about. Wow, this. look at that! You really you, you see the scene by scene, man. This is oh beautiful. I love I, make I love the it. Main and sub main beats of the film. Eventually, I do redo these proper, making a clean rough storyboard and timing it out as a like reel, shot for shot, how I'd like them to be looking in the final film. Things shift a bit here and there, but at this stage, I want to get as close as possible to how I want things to look in the final film. This is so sick. So what do you think? Can you tell the difference between how it started and how it ended? Wow. <laughs> that is so sick. Just to see how everything gets put together, man. That shit is fire. Oh. So is yes before you ask. You usually do need a screenplay before starting a storyboard. Mine, though, look like this. Vegeta this is sick. <laughs> also, Power Sword. <laughs> so yeah, you don't always need a lot to make something out of nothing. Sometimes you just have to start drawing. But uh, the time had finally come. It was time to get out of the chamber and contact the rest of the stray. My Wu-Tang Clan. The Stray Dogs. Hey, up, hey, the gang. I like that. Ooh. I'm Mike Chung. I'm a color director for Legend, Dragon Ball Tale. And I am very enthusiastic about color. Mike Chung. We really liked the old Dragon Ball movies. And um, we especially wanted to look at the first film. Yo, it's crazy, right? Because... I was literally thinking earlier when we was talking about, you know, Vegeta, you know, always, always getting hoed and everything like that. Listen, this is the, this is the film where Vegeta was the most bitch made of all of them. And I'm talking all the canon moments. You gotta, you gotta go here. You want to see Vegeta at his worst? Watch Broly 1. But yeah, I digress. But I, I get the color. Yeah. Color logic's in there. Sometimes color just doesn't make sense. You know, we just just experiment, just mm. keep going. Um, I love that part about color, and I hate it too. Um, but mostly love it. In the end, it's usually worth it. Mm. Would you say love always prevails at the end? <laughs> um, 
hopefully. Yes, yes. And one of the most important parts of the color scripting process is setting up color logic in the whole film. Wow. So everything looks so good. Our villain is going to be uh, Broly uh, and his energy is mainly green. Mm. If there were like calm and cool times and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't want green in there because that was reserved for the antagonist energy. Um, we had uh, blue and we had golden energy, which is obviously the Super Saiyan. That is uh, like I never I never thought of it like this. But th this shit is this shit is fire. I love what I'm hearing right now. You get to hear like the thought process behind even the color choices. That is, ugh, I love this. Golden energy and the blue energy was going to be reserved for Goku and uh, Vegeta, especially at the at the end when they sort of combine together against the green energy of Broly. So for color designing on the project, we wanted to pay homage to the uh, the old stuff, but we also like didn't want to be like one to one. We didn't want to copy and paste it. Mm. We wanted to keep it relatively authentic, but we wanted to add something of our own flair to it. Wow, look at I that. I the storyboards uh, that I get from Nasir, and um, we start to design like some of the scenes, some of the moods, time of day. In the film, we actually kind of have artificial like transitions in time of day kind of thing. Some of them are more for dramatic effect. Dude, this cool is sick. What's cool about this project sick. was that within this 10 minute film, we started off in this really high energy daytime setting and we transition into a dark yep. emotionally charged moment for goku which is reflected in the environment actually yep. it gets like super dark and almost like an artificial nighttime it finally breaks when we actually break the wall of the budokai tenkaichi mm -hmm. yep i remember that but that leads into like this somber beautiful in order to end the whole film oh my god so this one's one of the first war for legend um and I would actually take the layout and I would print it out on computer paper and I would use my light table and transfer it over to watercolor paper. And uh, this was actually one of the first paintings that we ended up doing. Wow. So, which we actually got rid of the grass in the end. No, we kept it. We, we, we kept it? We put it back yeah, in. Yeah, we, we kept it. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, grass restored. Yeah. Shout outs. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> so hopefully this uh helps to demystify a bit of the process you know it's uh it's not magic but it kind of becomes magic it really is you guys you guys literally created like i will say this again the greatest fan-made project in the history of history Ain't nothing, con ain't nothing topping this. And I know that there's some folks out there that are waiting for me to check out some other fan works, which I am. But even if I find enjoyment in them, this one has all my actual loyalty off rip. And y'all getting the big sounds for that one. Because that's facts. You, I make a royal exception. Mm. Now that pre-production of design, boards, and color script were done, it was time to get to the meat of all of it. My favorite part, the animation. Mm. So from start to end, let's check out some samples of what happens when you take some crappy thumbnails and try to take them one step further. Got a nice chunk of acting in the storyboard. Now to juice it up on paper, this shot is definitely worthy of some paper. That is so sick. Taking it further, you can see what cleanup, color, and composite will do to these hand-drawn frames that take God knows how long. This is amazing. How many Jumping times have I said that so far? And thumbnails into the animation, there's definitely a step in between it all, and that's laying out your characters. You want to lay them out every scene at least once, which means to draw them real nice, get their proportion, their scale, their detail and sneaking as much acting as you can into a single drawing to jumpstart your I... animation in the best way possible. <laughs> this is so good. And never underestimate the power you might have to get the most out of a single drawing. Oh. Here's another example of some oh. really crappy thumbnails, readable only by me. And of course they're for me. Who else is animating this? Mm. Going from storyboards to rough animation, this one on paper as well. Bro. To digital tie down. That's, yo. 
it look way, it looks so cool in motion well as some paper cleanup this one's definitely got to be one of my top favorites and i hope it is one of yours too absolutely 100 percent heavy body blows to broly's rib cage yeah truly makes for some wince worthy animation oh yeah free no doubt oh and believe me people have made remarks that i'm some kind of crazy person to want to do all this this sort of torture but i'm not totally crazy i definitely don't color it traditionally i use tv paint to do all my digital stuff ah! <laughs> oh no man whatever that won't stop me animation is about repetition you're trying the same thing over and over again i'll do it nine thousand more times if i have to but i don't want to do it nine thousand more times but anyway is this insane. is a frame by frame process it just goes with the territory sometimes you just have to enjoy the suffering oh and believe me you will suffer yo and hopefully you enjoy the completion of your project more than you hate the pain that it takes to get there that is like dude the amount of work me, that goes in the look on people's faces when they see broly getting worked on the stomach by muhammad ali priceless <laughs> yes uh oh wait a minute do we are we in, are we in this are we in this are we in this all right well hold on small spots where i can really make a character's acting shine is really important to me in this film short as they may be and chi chi with the short screen time that she made that's like her best emotion right there my favorite character to be doing this she has some great some great facial features for sure playing with the extremes of her expression was really great and our voice actor hmm. who you will meet in a moment did a fantastic she did she really did this character to life through her voice i had to do it justice took my thumbs turned them into storyboards listened to her voice and animated to that and animators don't always get to do it in that order so wow i was really lucky wow yeah that's awesome that he did it to her you know as maddening as this frame by frame process may seem i live for it the satisfaction level is so high it's over nine thousand. but who could i share this madness with let's see Hi, I'm Sandy. I'm a cell colorist on Legend. And basically what that is, is taking the colors in the design and putting them in the final animation. Holy crap. Sandy the Dragon. It's pretty mind-numbing, but it's kind of nice to relax a bit after like, a long day of work. And plus, like, I just really like being part of the project. It's like, really nice to have something to go to and to be part of something really cool. We work in layers and we make sure that all the colors fit underneath the lines. You gotta be really meticulous to make sure every frame is working and that everything is consistent throughout the entire animation. Yo, the amount of detail that really goes into this, yo. The, all, of, all of these individuals are freaking gods. All of y'all are amazing. I will never stop saying that. Yeah, it's a really rewarding job, but it does take kind of a toll on your body. This extra is from 2019. I had a hairline fracture on it by 2020. It turned into a double fracture. By 2021, my doctor said I should probably just find a new job. And I was like, it's okay. I'm not even getting paid. Okay. Screw the extras, though. Can't wait to jump onto the next project. And while all Passion. Passion, bro. That's passion really takes things to levels that people don't even understand, man. That's that's that is there's so many layers of why I love this 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 movie. So many. And I oh my god. All this goodness is happening. There's a separate league of extraordinary madmen ready to use their sharpened art blades <laughs> to take out background layout. Damn, there's so Hi, much. I'm Ines Basso. I'm a background layout artist on Dragon Ball Tail. Oh, I forgot the letter. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> She's funny. The line doctor. I like to do a lot of things, but I particularly like to do creature, character, environment. Uh, I like to create uh -huh. worlds where characters and creatures fit well. 
So my favorite part of uh, working on the project was uh, when I was detailing the, the lines I was doing. So it's basically the last part of uh, my job. It was like wow. icing on the cakes. Uh, I particularly enjoyed uh, doing cracks on rocks. It's really fun. My favorite scene is uh, when the... Bro, she does the line work. That's OD. There is the FX with the dragon eating the ball. I, I thought it was really mind blowing. But the, the whole project, I, I really loved it. It was really delightful <laughs> for the eyes. Uh, would you want to go through the torment? Oh. oh, wait, what? What did it say? The torment of another production together with the team again? I hope you guys know what that means. Of course I do. <laughs> My name's Giuseppe Arabia. Hey. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I like him already. Let me try again. <laughs> the inception of the project started at my place after a night of training. Uh, we were doing a sketch jam, and now he showed me a drawing you did of King Vegeta and some cool beatboards. After the release of the 2018 trailer, we worked backwards from the throne room, designing the corridor leading up to it. We knew we didn't want a delicate, polished environment, and we leaned towards something more savage and illustrious. Oh, yeah. Working off the board, we added tattered banners, ornately engraved pillars, and a red carpet leading up to the throne room doors. Focusing on these elements really reinforces the mood we're going for. Moving on, the next step was designing the planet's surface. We went through many iterations of this. It was challenging because I wanted something that felt at home in the DBZ universe, mm. but I didn't have that much reference to draw from. I used a lot of shots from uh, the Planet Namek arc and uh, the Brawly movie. They made it work. Hey, G. Hey, what's up, man? Yo, so uh, you got that layout? Why don't you get out? Yeah, man, here it is. Okay, this is looking good. I'm going to send it over. I love you guys. For the mic right away for paint. Hmm. Actually, uh, can we hold on that? I want to try something. Gee, what's up? Hey, what's going on, man? The, your next pass on the layout. Can I check it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Beautiful. All right. I'm sending this to Mike right away for paint. Oh, uh, hold that thought. Give me like another week with it. Don't tell me it took another. Oh, no. Gee, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Nas? You got that layout for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's right here. Okay, okay. Mike, I'm gonna call Mike tonight. Yeah. What? Gonna... What is it? Nah, just give, just give me like three more days. Seppi, it's been three years, blood. I need this layout tonight. Bro, please, just, I, I promise you, three more days. Three days. Yo, do you understand that? Nah, you guys, y'all already got it. <laughs> Yo. Yo, Nas, what's up, man? It's good. Uh, the movie's going to be out in a week. You got that layout for me or not? This is not. No way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check this one out. What do you think? Jeez. Okay. We have a winner. It was worth the wait. It was well worth the wait. Look at look at the detail, like, oh my god, you know, y'all are probably sick of me hearing me say the same shit over and over and over. But... Uh, so, oh my god, uh, for a second, let's look at the first one, dude. It looks like they lost the war in the first one. <laughs> <laughs> the first iteration was desolate and unimpressive. Mm. We kept building on that. We added trees. Roman pillars, a stone statues of loyal sane soldiers, and we tied it all together with Namekian architecture. We wanted this shot to look like the center of a powerful and thriving city, with an imposing statue of old Emperor Vegeta conquering Frieza. And we wanted the viewer to see this without saying it. That was my job. Mm. If I do it right, story, mood, atmosphere, I can achieve all this without saying a word. He nailed it, literally. That when that when you oh, when you start watching that movie and you and that's the first shot you see, it sets the tone, because of then then right then and there you like then you see like how far in the future it, it is and you're like, what happened? And then when you freeze it, 
you and you you zoom in on who my man is standing on. Oh my goodness! Would you want to go through the torment of another? Per oh, oh, fuck! Not if I have to be on camera again. <laughs> he is a gangster. <laughs> He is a gangster. We've looked at a lot of stuff. Screenplay, background art, animation. But we haven't looked at one really crucial thing in this film, which was writing. Hello, mm. I'm Conical. <laughs> <laughs> the kanji specialist? My wife and partner in crime, Conical Fasha, hey. used to be on camera in this documentary, uh, helped me a lot in this project. With her extremely organized eye, she really helped me with my kanji writing. Nasser, I saw your writing. Bro, the family was involved in this movie? Dude, like this is already over 10 out of 10. Like this is this is breaking the scale here. Y'all got to stop. It sucks. Do it again, please. <laughs> I studied Japanese for 3 years in university and I can't think of a single thing more embarrassing than writing Asian things. <laughs> And getting it horribly wrong. Mm. I don't want to be that guy who thinks he has a tattoo that says ninja, but it really says Care Bears. <laughs> so thank you, Kanako, for helping me look like the real deal. Like a boss. Oh, and uh, can we talk for a second about how badass the music was? Check out these usual suspects. Mm. First up! I'm Cooper Maiden. I'm a music composer for film and TV, and currently you can hear my work on Mighty Express on Netflix. Hey. Catch me on Saturdays. <laughs> nice. What it was like to create the DBZ prologue was uh, it was pretty exciting. I love making stuff that sounds older than it really is. And yeah. I, I think like the biggest test is if people can't tell if it was made that week. And so like when I first heard how tapey the strings and the horns were, that was like my immediate focus was like, how do I recreate those in an authentic way? And once I had that sorted down, everything else kind of fell together, like played some live bass on it. and tape saturation everything like. so uh nas slid me this african drumming track that was like an open source thing and the quality was a little like sketchy and stuff but that's what honestly made it so gritty and cool and so i was like i wanted to use real straight off the floor banging on garbage pans gr banging on like big plastic drums and stuff in my room and then couple that with some real expensive drumming library stuff to get real heavy heavy halls that we didn't have here in my tiny little room. And then I would like take my uh, my own voice and I rolled up like a big piece of sound foam and put a microphone at the end of it and just would scream into this foam like all night. And I was going, Hoo -hoo 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 and just trying like a bunch of different things to see what would work. And I bet my neighbors thought I was absolutely crazy or like somebody was in here getting murdered. This is the greatest film of all fucking time. I can't even believe the layers, the layers of work in this shit, man. Nobody called the police, thankfully, so now we have this great piece of music. Anything for Dragon Ball Z at the end of the day, it's like, we all grew up with this and it means so much to us. So when someone is like, would you do the thing that you do every day for work for, for something you love? It's not work anymore. That is a fact. Oh, now his life's is. over. <laughs> and two gentlemen who were fellow DBZ heads and amazing musicians were kind enough to let me use their wicked yep. music in the film. Charlie Para Del Diego. Yeah. This dude, I've heard his a lot, a couple of his tracks, and he's he's OD. Damn, my man be doing concerts. And even if we tried to, we wouldn't be able to ignore it. Frederick, man, I love this guy. The most iconic DBZ song ever. <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is similar to his theme. Friedrich. <laughs> One thing that they did this We made it Ha <laughs> ha Got him And now Bro Oh my gosh I almost started crying just now You think you're smart 
think you can hide from us? No. Nah. Your work is too loud, my friend. This shit is badass. Holy sh! Like, why the fuck am I crying right now, dude? There is so much yep. passion in I, this. Like, you can that was tell me. how much they gave a fuck. This is insane. Only one photo from God knows when, but you can't hide forever, my man. Boards, design, color, animation, backgrounds, music. Believe me, none of this would come to life without the master ear of our sound master. I got all 12 of those. Nice. Ah, oh, man. Hi, my name is uh, Dave Vitas, and I'm the creative audio director on Legend. I feel emotional just watching all of this, man. Because it's bringing me back to the first time. So, a creative audio director's job is to basically successfully marry uh, made from scratch sounds to picture. Oh, look at way. the. Yo, look at all of the freaking tracks. Oh my god. That's crazy. Where it makes the person watching it feel something at the end. So I first heard about the project back in 2018. I actually watched the trailer, uh, just like everyone else did, that first trailer. I was absolutely blown away by uh, the animation style, how it looked, how it sounded. <laughs> and I just wanted to add my own flavor uh, to the project. So I uh, messaged Nas, you know, just uh, said hello, just shot like an email out <laughs> uh, telling him how great the project was. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, he responded about a week later. And uh, yeah, we formed a working a relationship. And now uh, the rest is history. The prospect of working on an animation was actually really, really cool to me. We had to build all the sounds from scratch because we didn't want to get in the way of any copyrights or anything like that. And I just kind of took it personally as a challenge, you know, like how far could we push uh, the uh, Dragon Ball sounds to marry them to the picture, but like also build them from scratch. You know, when when so when at the beginning of the movie, when they tell you that everything was made from scratch, I didn't believe it all the way because of how perfectly in tune the sounds that were used basically compared to the original like i literally thought i was like okay maybe like obviously like you know everything is you know drawn out act voice actors all the animation the coloring you know all that work that goes in obviously that's that's definitely from scratch but when i heard the sound effects i was like nah 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 there's no way that they just recreated all that stuff too the proof is in the pudding so Amazing. I think the biggest challenges on the project, honestly, was just trying to recreate that specific sound style that DBZ is yes. known for. One of the things that really helped was uh, putting a lot of like VHS style tape effects on the actual sound. Uh, that helped actually like marry it to the picture uh, because obviously the picture was made to also look like an a 90 style cartoon. Here is the actual scouter reading. So all of this is just a little layers, and if I solo some of these, you know, you'll see here you got the clicks. Here we have, right, just another clicky sort of layer. More clicks, and then here's where the meat of the sounds come from. All right, like your beeps. So, and all of those get combined together, basically. I can Nah, nah, nah. Y'all need, need a Grammy. Y'all need... Th <laughs> this is... Wow. I am so speechless. So, uh, just remember, you know, all of this was basically uh, created from scratch. Yeah, so with Goku, we wanted him to be... Or, or to feel a lot more feral, right? Especially in the new uh, <laughs> so form. 
So yeah, just oh three tracks God. actually of uh, the same uh, Goku voice, but processed very differently. Layer one. Layer two. And layer three. Yo, can I have a version of this movie without the music? And can I have it without the voices too? Because like, I just want to hear every little bit of like sound in the background. Like, I, I, I truly want the uncut, uncut, uncut version. All the different versions. Like, I, I just... Because until Nasir gives us part two and three, okay? Like, until that happens, like, I, I just need this in every possible way imaginable that I could intake this. And that's it. Pretty neat. That's I, uh, amazing. the idea of, of using bells and stuff for his actual slam attacks and everything. And I can solo some of that stuff for Look you. Look at those layers. Right. Uh-huh. I throw on some verb at the end and then, it, you know, like it sounds great. And here's another layer two. Right. So like if we combine the entire edit together with all the layers, uh, you have something that sounds like this. But yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see what else we put out. And there you have it. All the elements that will make an animation come to life. Yeah. Oh wait, we need voices. Voices, right? All my life I've tried oh. for this one oh. moment. How was that? Yo, the man, the mi yo, this dude is actually I am OD. I Jordan Woman, and I am the voice of Vegeta, Goku, and a couple others in Legend, a Dragon Ball tale. He, well, coming into mm. voice acting was, well, I've always been a huge fan of like anime, cartoons, video games, and I didn't actually know that like a person was doing that. <laughs> what voice acting like means to me is is everything. I low key feel him, and voice acting is something that I've always wanted to pursue as well. I have a few small roles, but nothing too crazy. But it is always something that I would love to definitely pursue more and, you know, have more work for that. But, yeah, he did such a great job. You know, like, I can't not be doing this. Goku, yeah, I could just, like, swap into Goku whenever I want because he's kind of basically me. <laughs> um, have we ever met? Have we ever met? Uh, can you just tell me what I forgot so I can remember? Oh, man, it was... Well, for one, I didn't expect it because I think we added Vegeta in the first session because <laughs> I was brought on to do just Goku. And, wow. Uh, it was in that first session that I kind of mentioned, like, who you got for Vegeta? And he said, no one. So I just kind of shot my shot and uh, wound up voicing both of them and had a blast. Congrats. This project, it meant so much. To be part of something that is so, I have no other word for it, but incredible. I mean, it looks incredible. It sounds incredible. It is probably the best I've ever seen from like a Dragon Ball fan project. It now, is the best. Kakarot. Kame, Kame, Yo, oh. Next time, let's talk some rates. <laughs> She did a great job. Phenomenal. I just spat everywhere. I don't know if that picked up on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. What another lovely day of recording for me. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Elsie Lovelock, and I play the role of Chi Chi. That is such in a nice Legend, name. A Dragon Ball tale. Let's get to it. <laughs> so
So what first got me into voice acting was that I originally wanted to do musical theatre because I started out as a singer and I've done lots of stage productions and stuff um, all over the place, cabaret, entertaining, blah blah blah, but I get really bad stage fright and stage anxiety. So mm. I still wanted to Felt. act and do all the stage stuff, but without the <laughs> anxiety and voice acting was kind of just... I feel her like a hundred percent because, yo, back in the day, I used to do all that. I used to act on for, for stage plays and from middle school to high school. And I noticed that the older I got, the less I wanted to do on stage in front of all these people because I got everything that she's saying the the stage fright the anxiety like i literally would i remember telling our directors like hey like can i just you know have like a role that's like not that important because the first go figure my first role in the sixth grade was like not a lead but it was like one of those characters that you saw it was the, the play was into the woods and it was a character you saw quite often enough all throughout the play itself um i, I honestly forget who the heck i played <laughs> But it was a lot of fun uh, from what I remember. And I, I was doing that for like up until like my sophomore year. And then after that, I was just like, all right, I'm done. Like I tried to come back in my senior year and I was like, no, 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 I can't. Like this is, uh, but yeah, no, that's what I definitely feel for her. That's awesome. Just like the perfect marriage of me still being able to do what I love, which is act, mm. but not have to be on stage. Win, win. Mm what it was like playing Chi Chi. Um, I think I felt kind of apprehensive at first because she's been played in the past by lots of amazing women. And I just wanted to be able to evoke a little bit of what they evoke from the character. Um, and I'm hoping that I captured that. <laughs> so no, you don't have to hope. You definitely did. You definitely did. That was, that was amazing. That's kind of, um, you know, that part was fun for me. You know, I'm quite, uh, I have quite a bad temper myself, so it's always fun oh. playing a character that has a bad okay. temper. Just how stupid can you be? Ugh, just how stupid can you be? Mm, there it is. Have we ever met? And did you forget the promise you made to me as well? Hi, I'm Jason Alexander Sukram, and the man, Jason. You. Yeah. I play Broly in Legend: A Dragon Ball Tale. So preparing for Broly was actually it was actually an incredible experience. At the same time, it was also kind of challenging. I mean, even though the Broly just had one line that he was continuously <laughs> saying throughout uh, the film, which was Kakarot. I didn't want him to say Kakarot the same way over and over and over again. So what I wanted to do with that one word that he was saying, and also just the other things that he was doing, so like the grunts, the fight noises, mm. the laughs, mm. the screams, mm. I wanted to give different variations of it. So this way, one, the audience doesn't get bored, but two, it also matches the storyboard and Nasser's vision. Whoa, 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 hang on. There's more to this story. What? <laughs> Oh, we gotta go back. Jason, Jason, hey, yeah. Uh, uh, about the Broly line, were you able to record? Yeah, no, it's, it's Kakarot. It's just Kakarot. <laughs> yeah, man. Now oh, I got it, don't worry. Today, yeah. Today. Mm. <laughs> Yo, hey, shout out to the fruit snacks. Those are the good ones right there. Definitely a trusted brand. Welch's. Not a sponsor, by the way. Not a sponsor. Yeah, so Jason, about that uh, Broly line. Oh, did you record yet? <laughs> yeah, man, of course. I got it. Don't worry. Of course I'm going to. I'm literally, literally about to do it. So yeah, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love this. Leave your message after the tone. Jason, I need you to record. Then he really stalled like that?
That's white out there. <laughs> this year is so anime. <laughs> He went all the way to his house. <laughs> hey man, what's up? I was just about to go record. Oh yeah. Yo, low key, you you should have just made like a movie i mean this is basically a movie right it's a documentary but like all these like <laughs> like all the scenes that go into like the whole production of legend literally could just be its own thing like it could be like the prologue like that's actually that would, that'd be really funny like this is shot like a fucking anime to go beyond <laughs> Yo, my man was in the car. Yo, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, let's go. Wow. This man. This... So Dragon Ball Z had a big influence on me as a, as a kid. Hey, who did it? it? Yeah, show. All of us. It was my favorite anime. Um, and when it was airing on TV, it was something that me and everyone else in my class, we would have to run home after school just to go watch. That's facts. Uh, just so we wouldn't miss it. And then the next day, we would talk about the episode we just saw. And That's how it was, it was back in the day. I met Nasser. Um, I met him in grade six at that time. Yo. We became friends because we were loving, we loved to draw Dragon Ball Z. With Nasser and other kids in the class, they introduced me into their artwork that they had. So at that time, this was in the year 2000. So this is before the internet became big. Oh yeah. We couldn't use the internet as reference. Nope. So what uh, Nasser and these other kids had, they had black and white images. They were photocopies. And I would always borrow it from them. And then I would get my own when I would get it from other kids and then we would just inspire one another with our drawings. And then we would also just lend it to each other. Mm. And we made a collective type of binder for it. And it had all of the black and white images that we had. Plus it had some of our drawings that we would share with one another. And Geo City bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um. I love it. It was, at that, at that time, it was, it was huge. Um, and this was like the baseline of just everything that legend is now, right? It was pretty much based off of when we were drawing this in grade six back in the year 2000. Like this was huge. Damn, that's, that's the, oh, the lore. I think I'd be amiss if I didn't mention at least a few Easter eggs that were in the movie because it was packed with them. So let's mm -hmm. look at it. All right, top three Easter eggs. So listen, okay, so this is a quick plug to a video I did because I, as soon as I did that reaction, the first big video that I followed up with my legend reaction was literally pointing out as many of the Easter eggs that I could possibly find. That video alone was probably like 45 minutes long. And there's a lot of accompanying videos that came after that one that was just diving into all the theories and stuff like that, which Nasir had confirmed a lot of them for me, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of legend content out there that I put out um, by myself and as well as having him on the Full Power Podcast. And that was a uh, very fun and special episode because that was like one of the only episodes I think e ever where we almost went nearly three hours talking about this. And this, it was just he was going in telling us mad stuff. But yeah, here we go. Let's see. 
outside the Budokai Tenkaichi tournament. There's so many. This scene is actually Chris Abbott, Akuma, Tori Bai. Never miss an opportunity to sneak in a good cameo. I don't know that is. On the right, we have my wife walking into the stadium with my. Okay, see, not see that's not that's cheating because no one would have known that unless unless you know you're like close close. <laughs> Over here on the left, sitting beside Akira Toriyama himself, mm -hmm. is a clapping homeless man. Is that you? That man is me. <laughs> my cat, Komachi. That's crazy. From my crazy. 2017 graphic novel, Two Mistakes Too Many, sliding right past us mm. is the main hero, Ketaro Yoshitsune. I have to actually, I'm going to mention this as well. Nasir actually sent me his, uh, his own manga that I still have to go and finish. And I'm wondering if he would be okay with me reacting to it or, or maybe just doing a video or something like that but um yeah I, I i gotta finish it and from what i did manage to read was like the first few pages like this year been a genius his whole his whole life guys let's just put it that way okay this man he needs to he needs to take over dragon ball okay and you might think that you spotted akuma standing so casually waiting for a fight to start uh yeah as if he ever would but this is actually based off of a young Shin Sarith, an amazing martial artist and stuntman, and someone who I always reference when I'm trying to create high octane acrobatic choreography. Wow. And last, but certainly not least, the man himself, Christopher Sabat, just casually walking by. Please, sir, won't you stop by our tournament today? <laughs> it's only 20 pence. Crowd the control. Crowd. As I mentioned, I love cameos, so in this shot, you'll find every single member of Studio Stray Dog alongside Launch, yep. some guy who really looks like Trunks, but it's not. Krillin, Oolong, yep. Poir, yep. Yamcha, oh, okay. Tien, and Yamcha. Hmm. What? Yep, that's right. Yeah, you're going to have to explain this one because this was the one of the things that a lot of people were asking me, like, yo, why are there two Yamchas? And I'm just like, dude, they're just cameos, like, let it go. <laughs> Yamcha. Sat beside Bulma, Malcolm Wolpe's Jay from Kung Fu is Dead, David Liu's Space Maria, my wife and her sister, and the One Punch Man himself is our boy Yamcha. Again. Wearing a whole new set of clothes, too. Why, you may ask? Who gives a f? <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> this is why I love this guy. Thank you. It's a cameo, damn it. Funky faces. Look close enough at moments of great energy. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one he told me about, and this was something I would have, uh, no, literally not a single person would have been able to catch this unless you actually watch this frame by frame. Okay, there's literally no way to actually see it unless you are going frame by frame. Speed. And you might spot some funky faces. It says here. murder. Like here. Oh. Or here. Wait, it's not. Whoa. Oh, it's coming. Don't. Sorry, guys. Sorry, it's coming. Oh shit! This is more. This is more than I knew. Yeah, the monster face. That yo. Primal soul. Oh. And yep. That right. says murder. There it is. Unnecessary jaw rule reference. Nice. And well, that's basically the semi condensed long answer of how you go from nothing to something really special. And for those of you who so disrespectfully fast forwarded to this point of the end of the documentary, I want to leave you with a thought. When you have an idea for a project that's really special to you, keep it to yourself until it's ready to show. There is nothing less interesting than an undeveloped idea. People just aren't ready to digest it because they cannot see it the way that you do. Just keep working at it. Chip away at it. Pound after pound, page after page. Believe me, if you have confidence in your own project, it will be worth the wait. Just like my film. Oh, not this one. Oh, oh didn't I mention? I made a Dragon Ball Z movie like this years ago. <laughs> The year is 1999, a freezing cold Canadian winter. I was inside drawing when my big sister called me from upstairs. Nasser, come upstairs. There's a surprise for you. And she wasn't messing with me. 
There is a Christmas present for you from Mark, is what she said. It's right there on the bed. Really? For me? Muslims don't do Christmas. It wasn't normal. It had never happened before. But Mark was such a kind friend to our family and in many ways like a big brother to me. I have a big brother, by the way. But there were so many, so many presents just there waiting for me. Inside the first bag was a Charmeleon and a Pikachu. This was so cool. The next was a poster. A poster to a show that I didn't realize I didn't deserve. <laughs> so desperately needed in my life. And the last. The last was something else. It was a pair of them equal in size. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the poster had foreshadowed it. Sketchbooks? It was something I cherished dearly for the next 25 years. They were videos. Oh. It said OVA on them. And I didn't know it at the time. But they were going to change my life. The 12th and 13th OVA movies of a show called Dragon Ball Z. My man got freaking Fusion Reborn and Wrath of the Dragon, dogs. That's OD. As the snow piled up outside, as did the scraps of paper around me, watching these movies over and over again. Pause, draw, pause, draw. It was endless. My favorite heroes, the men that could destroy planets and vanquish any foe before them. And so I knew what I had to do next. Mark, you have a video camera and a color computer, right? Yeah? He told us about this. Okay, so yeah, on the same episode that I'm talking about that we had him for over for almost three hours, he did mention that he actually, he made a Dragon Ball Z move when he was a kid. When he was a kid. Oh my God, he's including it here. That's fire. Uh-huh. Well, how many windows does it have? 95 of them hell yeah that's enough and that was it all that was left was to get to work to make my own movie i can't tell you why i did what i did the way i did it but i locked myself in that room that summer just drawing me and the work no people no games no water not even an open window or a fan. Jeez. I enjoyed every moment of it. Every successful drawing, every scrap, and the heat. Almost trapping myself in a jail, telling myself I only deserved some congratulatory grape soda if I finished the work. Making this type of hell for myself, where what I was doing was what I loved, was so enjoyable to me that it seemed to be the perfect recipe of heat, stress, and success, and just what I needed to finish the art for my movie. One week and 183 drawings later, wow. it was time. It was time to go make these drawings move, and make the movie that I had lost sleep over every night from the excitement of the idea of just getting to my desk the next day. Without realizing it, it was time to leave a thing I had never seen before in Dragon Ball, but somehow naturally found myself in already. It was time to leave the hyperbolic time chain. I knew he was going to say that. For an artist. Now plagued with the deepest first question any young animator would have. How the hell do I make these move? And my <laughs> genius no budget solution? The turkey box. That's right. Right angled corners, that is. So I knew all my drawings would land right in the exact same spot without moving. Studio was in tip-top shape. And <laughs> me. Me and Mark worked throughout the night and would film each frame for two seconds. And then with this computer comprised of 95 windows, we'd speed it all up. So we had his tech and my method. What was next? I'll tell you what was next. Please tell me you're going to show it. Bro. <laughs> Vegeta's beating up Boo. What? And there it is. Through the glory of my crappy drawings, 
I became the first filmmaker in my elementary school. <laughs> Grade 5, Director Nas. My friends would flock me every other day. <laughs> hey, where is it? Can I borrow it next? Who has it? We? Dennis Kadeem? Where is this movie? I need to see it! It was amazing. Not the movie, it was just the idea of it all. It was like contraband. A secret movie that only the initiated knew about. Super but Saiyan's the battle. Happened. This glory was snatched away from me by my own flesh and blood. My brother had taped over it with Dawson's Creek. I don't want to wait for this song to be royalty free. It'll never. That is the biggest L anybody could ever hold, bro. That's crazy. <sighs> no disrespect, but God damn, that's crazy. It's way too old. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, but he did do that, and his name is forever in my death note. Oh, but okay, we we went there. All right. But you know, with technology and film restoration, Nasir Yagami did reshoot it. So, I guess what I'm saying is. We good. Oh, nice. Don't hold vengeance in your heart. Unless the other person really deserves it. Anyway, uh. I hope that any budding filmmakers out there could find some sort of value in this documentary. Just looking behind the veil of a small project made by a small team that under most circumstances should have never been. If it weren't for loyal friends, diehard DBZ fans, and a whole lot of midnight hours that led to one hell of a movie. Mm -hmm. So from the bottom of my heart and top of my lungs, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thanks, sir. Everyone. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And just know, I'm doing audio recordings in my car. So don't let anything stop you from making your dreams come true. Anything is possible. Four years in the chamber. That's facts. I got to make the movie I always wanted to with the people I always wanted to. And it was an absolute treat. And I think the child inside me is finally satisfied getting to see his own movie. Yeah, let me flex a little bit right here. Right here. In the Dragon Ball Z Hall of Fame. And beyond that, getting to see my friends, my whole family, and a ton of strangers who expressed their happiness through their art, kind comments, and their reactions <laughs> has left me speechless. Shout outs to you, Nasir. Thank you. Is, is all we had. And you know, if in some sort of way you could take all that love, support, hypeness, gratitude, positivity, newfound friendships, and just sheer smiles, and convert it all into a form of currency. Well, then I'd have become a millionaire overnight. But definitely, the poorest one you ever met. <laughs> Making of the poorest millionaire. Wow. That was awesome, man. That truly really was. I really, uh, wait. Okay, yeah, all the people included in this documentary by name, face, voice, or, or reference are the real deal. Absolutely, 100%. Wow. And now, and, that, and now it is closed up. It is now all boxed away. Hi, Parker here inside the actor studio with, you guessed it, your favorite stars. So, now that legend is all done and done, what's next for you? Oh, I'm heading south. I hear they love Dragon Ball Z in Brazil. <laughs> Cars with doors that open like this. And this. First of all, that is the illest drip I've ever seen Vegeta wear. Like, what? That is so unnecessarily OD. That is... That's fire. Not this. I'm gonna have to check in with my agent, but I'm gonna be in this new film. 
it's with Jason Statham. Hold on, yo. He looked like Alex with this with this shirt on. <laughs> For Street Fighter Three. The Menening. Enter the men. <laughs> Except for that laugh I just did there. <laughs> like, that's not going to be in the title. But it's going to be a blockbuster smash hit. Look out for it. Mm. I'm going to be a father, and my son will have the most glorious name. His name will be... Gohan. Hogoku. <sighs> yeah. I too became a father, yes. Not Hoko. <laughs> this is a battle lost at awesome powers of my wife, about greater than any fight will really ever could be. Yeah. I have thenceforth decided to take the L. <laughs> For now. Oh. Baby number two. Incoming. See you on whatever comes next. Ah, man. See you on whatever comes next, indeed. Well, I do have a little bit of, I have an idea of what uh, will come next. And that is to simply remind everybody that Kameha Khan is happening in May. And they're theming the entire convention, what it looks like to me at least, around Nasir and the, you know, some of the staff, some of the, the voice actors from Legend. So I'm sure they're going to have like some panels and, you know, like a whole thing for them. I would honestly implore just about anybody that has really, really loved or was taken back or just positively affected by Legend to go attend this convention. Originally, I wasn't even going to go, but the fact that Nasir and the gang are going to be there, I'm way more inclined to do so. Um, just so that I can meet him in person, because like I said, we're already homies. We already like threw it down to Street Fighter, like on on Fightcade. I really do, from the bottom of my heart, I really do want you know you guys. If you made it this far in this video, then I definitely appreciate that. But I do want to leave you guys with just that Legend of Dragon Ball Tale changed my life. It is like another piece of like an example of the power of what passion can really bring out. You know, it, it could literally shine brighter than any official work. But as another reminder, Nasir made this obviously because, you know, he was tired of seeing Vegeta getting hoed. But at the same time, this was a love letter to Toriyama and to Dragon Ball Z overall. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that I would love to see a ton of people at Kamea Khan just so that they have an opportunity to let him and the rest of these hardworking folks know how much legend really did mean to all of us. And who knows? I'm not saying like, you know, this is going to guarantee us part two and part three off rip. But at first, uh, for a while, Nasir didn't really understand. He didn't put the numbers to any kind of like actual perspective like you know he saw all those millions of views and he was just like i don't even know what to think of this or you know like and and that's totally cool but i feel like once he experiences that in real life who knows what may happen or like he said see you whenever comes next and with that i will bid you all adieu i know this video is uh who it's it's a long one but i do appreciate y'all uh for checking this out for checking out the doc in and of itself, for checking out Legend, and uh, the Full Power Podcast and myself will definitely do our best to make sure that we are in attendance for Kamehameha Khan, for Nasir, really, for Nasir and the rest of the Straight, Straight Dog Studios, um, or Studio Straight Dog, I, mess, I always mess that up. Make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves, may the power protect, keep it locked loaded right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, and stay inside, and I'll see you guys next time.